Okay, welcome back to the workshop. This week we're attempting a tool review for the first time. Uh, so uh, what's happened is Banggood have sent me a coaxial indicator to have a look at and we're going to test it out and put it through its paces and see how it goes. So let's get into it. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, put a piece of steel in the in the vise, just as an example. We've got a nice hole uh, there, and we're going to um, attempt to centre our mill over that hole. So we've set up our coaxial indicator in the hole, and um, we'll have a look at the where it is, and we can see. Um, it's not touching the sides at the moment, so this just gives us a chance to uh, eyeball it as close as possible into the middle there. So that looks pretty close. And then what we can do is just adjust that out a bit. Okay, so um, now let's see how we are. So we can see. Um, this movement here indicates that we're not over the center so what I like to do is um, while it's running I like to adjust to zero roughly in the middle of the travel there and it gives us an, an idea and then when it's stopped I'll adjust this probe so it's um, so that it's in alignment with the x-axis and I'll bring that back down where I think my zero is and then I'll adjust it there so it's in line with the y-axis and I'll adjust that back to that zero mark and then we'll try it out again and you can see we're much better so let's just readjust that's about where we think the center is and this just uh, you can do it while it's running, but um, this is a, a very fast way to do it, I've found, because um, it's hard to know which axis to uh, is, is uh, causing the run out. So now we've got it running, we can just play with that while it's live. You can see get a feel for where the middle is you sort of see it gets bigger as I go and that's about the spot there so it's about about there and look at the x-axis again it's getting bigger it's getting bigger about there is where we want it. So that's that's um, that's about as good as we can we can uh, we can get it. There's a little bit of still a little bit of movement there, but um, I don't seem to be able to reduce it below that. So now that means that our our spindle should be right over this um, axis, uh, and um, and we're good to go. So 
that's how that's how the indicator is used. Uh, it's quite simple, quite fast once you get the hang of it, and you can change these probes to um, any one of six different probes. This is the probe for the internal. Um, for an internal hole, as we're doing as we're doing now, this is one for an external hole, so it can reach around the edge. And there's another one here, which uh, you can use for a, a, a center punch mark, which is pretty pretty useful as well. And that's as you can see, that's spring loaded, just fits, sits in the center punch mark. So what? Let's uh, zero zero that on the DRO, just so we don't lose. Make sure, no, no, so we know where we are, and um, I'll set up uh, the 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 old school method of uh, measuring it and and see how close we are. Um, here you can see I've got a um, an, an, a Noga holder with a magnetic um, clamp on the collet, and it's just basically acting as an arm to hold this test gauge and if I if I um, look at that side we're on zero we look at that side we're on two thousandths and if we look at this side we're on two thousandths and look at this side we're on about minus one Looking at, looking at the digital readout here, which I zeroed uh, before, which I zeroed this with this with the coaxial indicator, um, and getting it as best I can uh, using the, um, the the test gauge. We're this is in inches. We're still within. A thousandth, nearly two thousandths uh, in the y direction, and about a thousandth uh, in the x. So not bad, really. Um, that's 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 pretty close. Um, dial here. This is the this is um this is the indicator here, and you can see uh, hopefully um, that that's. This this pivot here and this um, lever device that that's that's actually the thing that spins and um, it's it's the thing that translates the moot the left to right or the, the transverse movement of this probe into the movement of the dial so. Um, I guess the first thing to check, uh, if you if you if you if you want if you're interested in the accuracy of this thing, is if I turn this with nothing on it at all, uh, any movement there is uh, is is uh, you're never going to get better than that. That's that's not touching anything. So that's that's its center point, and you can see there is a little bit there. Now, if we look at it, if we t it's very easy to, to drop this pin out here, the punch, and you can remove this piece here. And when I first got this um, indicator, uh, what I found was that this slot here was a little bit sloppy, uh, and I I just tightened that up uh, just just by squeezing it gently, ever so gently. Uh, in in the vice, so that was a, a snug fit. It didn't seem to have too much impact on the accuracy. Um, so, but it just made me feel happier. You can see uh, in the top here, there's a pin, and that pin is the, is what makes that uh, dial gauge move up and down. So, what you have is this this piece here, which is a very nice 
fit into there. This bearing surface here is what rubs against uh, the indicator. So any inaccuracy in this gauge, there's only two sources uh, of inaccuracy that it can have. And one is this surface here, this, um, this top surface, and the other is this bottom surface here. Now if you buy one of these devices and you have any issues with it at all, um, once you've tested it, as I showed how to test it, um, it really is not a problem if you have a lathe, which if you've got a mill you probably have a lathe, to clean up that surface. And just hold it in your chuck there, um, maybe uh, put a dial gauge to make sure that you're running concentric and then you can just clean up this face if you have any dramas uh, with that. I'm not saying that you will, but if you were to, now um, I've put a, I found that a, a drop of oil on here um, helped tighten it up a little bit and it, uh, it, it improved things. Um, when you reassemble it, don't forget this spring in here. Uh, it really is a very simple tool and and I did do some tests with it to test what would happen um, if it was not held concentrically in the collet um, and whether that would affect the accuracy because I did I did worry that uh, it would um, magnify any concentricity errors uh, in the chuck or the collet. A lot of people hold these in a drill chuck because uh, they're typically used before a drilling operation. And what I found, uh, which surprised me quite a lot, just tap that back in, there we go, good as new. Um, uh, any 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 run out in in how it's held uh, makes no difference at all to 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 the position. Uh, I I actually set this up uh, with uh, deliberately with run out uh, with quite a lot of run out in the in the way it's held and it it, it made no difference whatsoever to the reading. Um, what will make a difference is this face or that face in there, and if you have any issues with that. Uh, you can fix that yourself, no problem. Um, so don't be afraid of it, don't be afraid to take it apart, don't be afraid to check it, uh, me to, to measure how well it's working and don't be afraid to deal with it if there's any issue. Uh, it's a very inexpensive tool and a very valuable tool um, and can be tuned up uh, with no problems at all. So there we go, that's, that's how it works. So as you can see there, that's that's very good. That's that's dead nuts, and I could probably tweak that a little bit, but it's just not worth it. There's that there's that much vibration. There's that much uh, vibration in the tool at the best time. So um, let's zoom out a little bit. This holder that I've made to make sure that this is concentric up here, let's use that to our advantage and destroy the concentricity and see what happens. Is that a good idea? Well, that's, that's definitely out of whack now. Probably half a millimetre. Just make sure it's tight so that it's plainer. We got my head in the way, haven't we? Okay, now we didn't touch anything, so we're zero zero. No, 
it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. You can see that this is moving left to right by a good millimetre and the difference here is less than a thousandth of an inch. So that means I, I could have put that in my collet and uh, it would have been f absolutely fine. And it doesn't matter whether you uh, use a drill chuck or um, or whatever you use. Let's prove. Okay, so uh, in summary, uh, a very useful tool. It's fast to find the centre of a hole. Um, it's it's very nice to be able to look directly at the gauge and get things lined up, as you saw with uh, using uh, a test indicator on a on a um, on a on a clamp the way I had. Uh, you're looking behind, and it's 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 very annoying and inconvenient to do it that way. And I found it was about three times as long to to set things up uh, that way. Um, and I ended up with the same accuracy. Uh, they were, they, they were, the two methods were were equivalent. Uh, the quality is 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 fine. Um, and if you have any issues, uh, you can deal with them uh, yourself uh, without any any problem. This is not hardened steel. Uh, it can be cleaned up uh, if 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 you need to. Um, so I would say yes. It's it's a it's a good thing. It's a good tool and. Uh, um, the thing, to, the one thing to be a bit careful uh, before you buy it, though, is to is to have a look at this measurement here, because on your on your mill, if you if you've got a small uh, home mill, uh, you might not have enough height in here over your vice. So have a look at the the height that you've got available, and 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 check that you've got enough. Um, just throw a ruler on there. Scale. I've got that's you know it's it's six inches you need. If you've got six inches with this tool, you're fine uh, above your vice. So um, just make sure of that from the bottom of your collet to the top of your work surface. And if you've got that much space, uh, then definitely uh, it's it's a it's a useful tool. And I think I'll um, uh, if I if I had a Paid for this one with my own money. I would not be, I would not be worried at all about um, the hundred dollars uh, that it cost me for, for you know, because uh, it's, it's it's very it's very useful. Um, simple tool, uh, accurate. Um, so anyway, thanks for watching. Um, uh, ho I hope you uh, enjoyed the tool review. Let me know. Uh, it's actually a bit harder than it looks to do a tool review. I was quite surprised, um, and it's. I don't know. I don't know if I would do another one uh, where the tool is supplied. It puts a lot of pressure on you to. Um, uh, I don't know. If it's. It's. A, it, it really. It. It really hard. It's much harder to be objective. Um, in, in this situation, I've tr tried to be as objective as possible. Uh, but uh, doing a tool review, you really uh, it you, know, you don't you don't want to say the wrong thing, so uh, you end up testing the tool uh, very rigorously. And I did a lot of uh, experiments uh, that I didn't show on camera, um, uh, sorting things out, um, getting to know how it worked and um, and how it's used. So uh, I learned quite a lot in the process. Um, but what I thought would only be you know, a quick video ended up taking me uh, quite a bit of time. So uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you thought, um, uh, any, any tips, uh, and whether you'd like me to do more uh, tool videos. Um, I kind of, uh, <laughs> I've avoided them up to now. And uh, uh, yeah, I don't know if I'll do more, but we'll see anyway. So let me know. Um, uh, enough babbling and uh, thanks for watching.